this, Dera Comentadore is without a doubt one of the most iconic supercars of the 90s. And that says a lot. The 90s brought us some of the best supercars we have ever seen, and was the decade of the last analog supercars. But only a number of them are still talked about, and is Dera and the Comentadore is without a doubt one of them. Something very impressive for a car that never made it into the roads. But thanks to countless magazines, articles and games like Need for Speed 2, the legend of Isdera and Comentadore lives on. Isdera was founded by Eberhard Schulz, an established engineer and designer. During the 70s, Schulz started working for Porsche when he was involved in a number of projects, but would be during the 80s when Schulz would really make a name for himself. In the late 70s, he met Ranier Butchman of BB Auto. BB was mostly a Porsche tuner, but also tuned Mercedes and VWs. But the most important project came in 1978. The BB CW311 was built to pay homage to the 300SL, in a sort of way being the successor of the Gullwing. The 3111 was clearly inspired from the C111, which was supposed to be the real successor of the 300SL, but sadly Mercedes cancelled the project. Actually, Schulz had worked on the C111 program when he worked for a brief period for Mercedes in the late 60s, and since then he was fascinated with this car. He gave its first try in 1969 when he built the Erator GTE, which was a very impressive car for the time. The Erator came in three different versions, with the most amazing one being the Mark III, which was powered by a Mercedes 5 liter V8, tuned to produce 450 horsepower. This power was enough to propel the car from 0 to 100 in 4 seconds and to reach a top speed of 320 km per hour. The CW311 was built on the same basis as the Erator, just this time had a more modern design. But the car still kept a number of the design costs that would become synonymous with the Isdera, such as the gullwing doors and the use of a periscope as a rear view mirror. The power came from the same 6.3 liter V8, which AMG used on the 600 at the time. The engine produced 380 horsepower and according to Schultz, the car could top 300 km per hour. And one of the most impressive parts about the 311 was that it was the first car to use the Mercedes name, even though Mercedes had no association with it. Lotec would do a similar thing with its C1000. The car remained on the prototype phase, never going into production. Schultz returned to the project in 1982, when he founded his own company, Isdera. Isdera was an abbreviation for Engineer Bureau for Styling Design and Racing, Engineering Company for Styling Design and Racing. And the first the car of Isdera was the Spider 033i. The car on the first glance looked just like a 311 which had lost the roof, but the car had some key differences, with the main one being the dimensions. The Isdera was bigger compared to the 311, 
this because Schulz wanted to offer the Spider on a number of different engines. The Spider was in production from 1982 to 1992 and came with three different engines. On its top version, the Spider came with a 3-liter Mercedes Street 6 with 228 horsepower. Two years later, at the 1984 Geneva Motor Show, Isdera presented the Imperator 108i. This was the coupe version. Differently from the small engines of the Spider, Schultz only used the top Mercedes V8 engines for the Imperator. The car came with three different engines. 5 liters, 5.5 liters, and 6 liters. The latter one being prepared by AMG. While in 91, Imperator received a number of stylistic changes. With the biggest one being the hidden headlights, and that the periscope was replaced by a normal rear view mirror. But the most iconic and the most well known is Dera would come in 1993. By the early 90s, the Imperator was an old car, with a price tag of 400,000 marks, which definitely scared a lot of customers, and with competition from cars like SJ220, EB110, McLaren F1 and Diablo, Schultz had no other choice but to build a new car, which had to be on the same level, or even better than the big guys. He started by building the chassis, which similarly with the Imperator and other supercars of the time, was built out of an aluminum tubular frame, while the body style was without a doubt one of the wildest of the time. Just look at it. Schulz took a ton of inspiration from the long-tailed Porsches of the mall, and talking about Porsche, the headlights came from the 968. Schulz insisted on using parts from established brands, mostly Mercedes and Porsche, so the potential customers wouldn't have a problem finding a mechanic that would work on his cars. The body was made out of a mix of fiberglass and Kevlar, pretty common at the time. Carbon fiber was still pretty new and a luxury that only the big guys could afford. For the engine, Schultz continued with Mercedes. Just that this time he went for the amazing M120, which had just been introduced with the 140. This made the Cometadore one of the first production supercars to use the M120. I'm saying production since in 91 Mercedes showed the C112 concept, which definitely was a huge inspiration for Schultz, not only for the design but also for the technical part. Since like the C112, the Commentadore, beside the V12 engine, also used a 6-speed manual. This was a Getrag 6-speed manual transmission, powered from Porsche 911 Turbo. Of course, with a number of alternations, so it could handle the torque of the M120. Also, like the C112, the Commentadore had some pretty advanced active aerodynamics like a rear wing which helped with the aerodynamics on high speed but also acted as an air brake. The Cometadore also had active suspension which lowered the ground clearance, helping even more with the aerodynamics, lowering this way the drag efficiency. This was pretty advanced stuff for the time, but in the end Schultz spent more than 4 million marks on this project. The car made its debut in 1993 at Frankfurt Motor Show, when the car turned a ton of heads, since in a sort of way replicated the magic of the C112, which despite the endless interest and countless checks that were sent to them, Mercedes decided not to put the car into production, disappointing the people the same way they did with the C111. So is there a head the opportunity to fill the same gap they filled with the Imperatore? Sadly, due to a number of financial problems, the Comptatore never went into production. For most of the 90s, the car made appearances on a ton of magazines across Europe, and made its most memorable debut in 97, when the car became part of the Need for Speed 2. In 1999, Schulz sold the car to a Swiss collector, which asked for a number of changes like the iconic periscope was replaced by rear-view mirrors and the gorgeous BBS wheels were replaced by ACV wheels. These changes 
kind of ruined the car. But also the car received the 6.9 liter version of the M120, in a similar fashion with the CLK GTR. This was one of the better changes. The car was renamed Silver Arrow, in honor of the Mercedes racing cars. In 2016 the car was purchased by Symphonia Automotive AG, now Isdera AG, which together with Isdera Classic Team and Schultz brought the car back to its former glory, with the original paint, with the periscope and the BBS wheels. Now there is a big misconception about the Cometadora. It's generally believed that Isdera built two Cometadoras, but that's not true. The true story is that Schultz started building a second car, but he only finished the tubular frame, and for years nothing happened with the chassis, until a Isdera Imperator owner offered to buy the chassis, with the interest to build a second Cometadora. Originally, Schultz agreed on this project, but later he decided to leave since he disagreed on a number of points with the customer, who wanted to make some changes to the original Cometadore. The car eventually was built, but both Schultz and Isdera don't recognize this as one of their cars. For most of the late 90s and early 2000s, Schultz and Isdera stayed quiet until 2006 when they came with another crazy car. The Autobahn Courier 116i was a complete departure from the old Isderas, but this project had been a long dream of Schultz, who started thinking about a deco-style car since the late 80s, and the choices made for this car clearly show that. Like the previous Isderas, the Isdera Autobahn Courier was made out of parts from other cars, except the body which was mostly hand-built, while the uh, passenger partition came up from a Volkswagen Beetle, the instrument panel from Porsche, while the engines from Mercedes. The Isdera Autobahn Courier didn't have one, but two Mercedes 5.6 liter V8s, the same that the 560 SCL used. This V16 monster could produce up to 600 horsepower, which was enough to propel this 2.5 ton beast to over 250 km per hour. Looks like the Autobahn Courier was built from the ground up as a special one-off project, while at the 2018 Beijing Auto Show is there a presented the Cometatore GT. Differently from the big Mercedes engines of the past, the GT uses two electric motors, which produce a total of 800 horsepower. The GT takes a lot of styling costs from the Isderas of the past, like the short nose and the long tail, just that this time the car could sit forward. Isdera has stated they are going that they are only going to build two examples, but it's very impressive to see an electric prototype to have such a high quality. Isdera was made and was killed by the time that lived on. With the economic boom of the 80s, people were hungry for special cars, which set them apart from the rest. And Isdera found quite the success back then, since they managed to sell 30 Imperators and 16 Spiders. And they never reached the states, which would have helped them even more. But the opposite happened in the early 90s. The bubble burst and people weren't that interested on expensive high-end supercars. Also in the early 90s we have the supercar bubble, with new supercars coming from every single part of the globe. EB110, XJ220, F1, GZV16T, Diablo, AVTech slash Vector WX3, Ferrari F50, Dower and the rest of the street legal 962s. All these cars were fighting for the same market. These weren't your typical SL600 or 3480s. These were cars with an average base price of plus $350,000. Definitely a very small and niche market, especially back in the 90s when $1 million supercars still weren't a thing. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.